Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to HTML Basics. We'd like to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Malen, and we also have Hannah assisting with the chat and Jess assisting with Zoom tech-related issues. Before we get started, we wanted to go over some Zoom features. Your mic and video have been muted and turned off. You'll be able to use the chat feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, we do ask that you type it into the chat, as we'll have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Any inappropriate comments will result in the immediate dismissal from this program. Before I get started, I just wanted to state that this class is just covering the basics and anything outside the scope of that will not be covered. A recording of this presentation will be posted to our YouTube page, which you can find on our website. Today, we're going to go over some of the basics of HTML. We'll start by going over the basic structure of a web page and defining what HTML is. We'll look at the software that's needed along with the basic syntax of HTML. We'll also look at some of the basic elements used. We have our headings, our paragraphs, our lists, images, and links. I'll break down an HTML, an HTML document line by line and then demo what we've learned today using an online code editor. Let's begin by looking at the basic structure of a web page. There are various types of websites, such as e commerce sites, government websites, blogs, photo portfolios, etc. And while they all vary in purpose, the structure and foundation of web development is the same. When you look at the basic structure of a web page, you'll notice that there are three layers. You have your HTML, which provides the content. You have your CSS, which provides the presentation of the web page. And then you have your JavaScript, which covers how the web page behaves. Now that we have a basic understanding of the different layers of a web page, let's define what HTML is. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's used to create web pages and websites. HTML is not a programming language, rather it is a markup language. A markup language annotates a document to control the layout of the page. So HTML tells the browser what is on the page, such as a heading or a paragraph, so it provides that structure. When an HTML document loads in a browser, the browser reads the document line by line, starting from the top of the document all the way down to the bottom. There are two things that you need to create an HTML document. You need a web browser to view your HTML and a text editor to create your document. While traditionally you would want to download an open source text text editor for creating your HTML documents. As a beginner, you can play around with online code editors. These editors are built into the browser. They're user-friendly and quick in getting you started. As an introduction, you can start out with an online editor such as codepen.io to test the waters and then move on to an open source editor like Visual Studio Code that you would need to download. Alternatively, if you're using a Windows computer, you can use Notepad. And if you're on a Mac, you can use TextEdit. In this program, we're going to be using CodePen.io. So HTML syntax consists of elements and tags. An HTML, an HTML element is a component of an HTML document. It is the markup that you use to give meaning to the HTML document. There are several different types of elements, such as paragraphs and headings. You're able to nest most HTML elements. What this means is that an element can contain other elements. For example, you can nest a link 
which is technically called an anchor element within a paragraph element. Most HTML elements, not all, but most, are written with a start tag and an end tag. So this right here is your start tag, and this is your end tag. These tags are used to mark up the start and end of an HTML element. To create the tags, you use a left angle bracket, the element name, and then a right angle bracket. This makes up the opening tag. A closing tag has a left angle bracket, a forward slash, and then the element name followed by a right angle bracket. Oftentimes, the word element and tag are used interchangeably to mean the same thing. However, the key difference is that tags are the opening and closing punctuation needed to create elements. Most elements contain the start tag, content in the middle, and then the end tag, while other elements only contain an opening tag because all of the information they need to convey is contained within the tag itself. In HTML, all elements have a default display value. They are either block elements or inline elements. Block elements take up the entire width of the space available and start on a new line. An example of a block element includes headings and paragraphs. Inline elements don't start on a new line, rather they only take up whatever space is needed. A great example of an inline element is the anchor element, which allows you to embed links into your web page. Here is an example that illustrates, illustrates the syntax of elements and the use of tags. This paragraph element, so P for paragraph, illustrates um, the both opening and closing tags needed. As previously mentioned, there are several different types of elements. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first element, just headings. Headings range in size from one to six and are formatted as H1 all the way to an H6. While headings vary in text size, you don't use headings for their size. If you want to change the size of any text on a web page, you normally do it through CSS. You use headings based on the structure that they provide. Think of headings as subject headings. They outline a web page and have diff and have structural meaning. An H1 heading is considered a main top level heading. A web page can only have one H1 heading, and often you see it as the title of the web page. An H2 heading is a subsection of an H1, and so on and so forth. When using headings, it is best to use headings chronologically. You don't want to use an H2 heading without having first used an H1, and you don't want to use an H5 heading without having used at least an H2 level heading. Here's an example of how headings are used. This is a snapshot taken from the Plano Public Library's homepage. This code was used to create this H1 level heading. While there's a lot of information um, in this H1 opening tag, I'd like to draw your attention to the basic structure. So you have your opening, H1, and then your closing tag with the word library sandwiched in between that H1 opening tag and that H1 closing tag. Our next element is the paragraph element. Paragraphs are used to split up text into different sections on a web page. It's a good method of controlling space. It's important to note that paragraphs can include text, images, forms, and links. You specify a paragraph element by using an opening 
tag such as this and a closing tag. And then your content is sandwiched in between. Here's an example of the paragraph element in use. This is another snapshot taken from the Plano Public Library's Business and Partnerships webpage. This is the code used, um, the code written to display this paragraph up here. I'd like to draw your attention to that opening tag as well as that closing tag. And then again, what's sandwiched in between is your content. Lists are another important element in HTML. Lists are important because they help to group information together. Some examples of lists include the navigation bar of a website, a series of different links to resources, um, or a list of articles or content on your main web page. There are three different types of lists in HTML. We have definition lists, unordered lists, and ordered lists. Definition lists aren't commonly used unless, unless you're grouping terms and descriptions, such as a glossary. <clears throat> in this presentation, we're only going to focus on unordered and ordered lists. So there are two basic parts to a list. The first part is the main tag that specifies what type of list you are using. And the second part is the individual list item. List items are nested within unordered and ordered lists. Nested elements means that one element is placed within another. This creates a type of relationship tree that is often referred to as the parent and child relationship. Let's take a look at unordered lists for further clarification. An unordered list is a type of list in HTML that is displayed by default as a vertical bulleted list. An unordered list is specified by using UL within opening and closing tags but it's not enough to include the opening, <clears throat> excuse me, and closing tag. You have to further specify each individual list item in your list. These items requ require their own opening and closing tags. And you specify these items by using LI, list item, within the tags. Here's an example of the format used when creating an ordered list. The input, so the HTML you write is on the left and the output, which is what appears in the browser is on the right. Notice how the list items are contained within the opening and closing UL brackets. This creates a type of relationship between the two elements, and it's very clear. The UL is the parent element, and the LI is considered the child element. It's possible to nest several lists within lists, depending on the need. So when you're trying to determine what type of list you should use, it's best to think about what meaning you're trying to convey by using the specific type of list. For example, does the sequence of the list items matter? If it doesn't, maybe you're better off using an unordered list. If the sequence does matter, perhaps you're better off using an ordered list. Here's an example of an unordered list in use. This is the code that's used to display this list. I'd like to draw your attention to the opening UL unordered list tag and that closing UL tag, as well as each individual list item, which has its own opening and closing tags. An ordered list 
is a type of list in HTML that's displayed by default as a vertical numbered list. An ordered list is specified by using OL with an opening and closing tags. Just like we saw with unordered lists, you need to specify each individual item within your list by using the list item opening and closing tag. So here's an example of what that format of what that formatting looks like when you're creating an uh, um, an ordered list. So this is the input that is contained in your HTML document, and this is the output that would appear in your browser. Here's another example taken from the Plano Public Library uh, Learns blog of how to make slime. This is the code that was used to create this list of instructions. I'd like to draw your attention to the basic structure of this um, ordered list. You have your opening and closing tag, as well as each individual list item that contains its own opening and closing tag right here. So you have your opening and closing. The next element we're going to look at is the image element. If you're trying to display any sort of image on a web page, you would often use an image tag, which is abbreviated as IMG. An image element is an empty element, meaning it is self-contained and does not have a closing tag. Rather, it's just one opening tag and all the information needed is written within that opening tag. In HTML, there are these things called attributes. Attributes are often used as a way to communicate more information, or they're used as a way to single out a specific element so that it can be styled a certain way in CSS and used a certain way in JavaScript. When it comes to images, there are two key attributes that are used. The first is the source attribute, which is abbreviated as SRC. Source tells the browser where the image can be located when it's loading the page. So it points to the direct file path of the image. While the source of the image can point to the file on your computer, it can also point to files and images that are on the web. Alt is another attribute that's important to images. It stands for alternative text and it contains a description of the image. Alt is incredibly important for accessibility as the alt attribute provides screen readers with information about the picture itself. Here's an example of the image element in use. The snapshot is from the Genealogy Center webpage. This code was written to display this image. Notice there aren't any closing tags. It's just one tag and it contains everything that you need. There's a lot of extra information in here. I would like to draw your attention to that source, which points to the direct path of where that image can be found and the alt, which is that description of the image itself. So the last element that we're going to look at today is the anchor element. The anchor element is used to add links to your web page. For example, you can link from a page on your site to another that's also on your site, or you can link from your website to an external website. In HTML, anchor elements are specified by using opening and closing tags. They contain a key attribute called href. href stands for hypertext reference, and it's an important attribute because it tells your browser what site or page it needs to go to. The format for links is as follows. You have your opening tag, that left angle bracket, followed by an A for anchor, and then you have href equals 
and then a quote, uh, a set of quotation marks. And this is where you would insert your link. And then you have your content that's going to be hyperlinked. And then you have that closing tag. So here's an example of the anchor tag in use, or I should say anchor element in use. This snapshot was taken from the Plano Public Library's Money Smart webpage. Notice the link at the end of this paragraph. On the right, you'll find the anchor tag that relates to this sentence. So I'd like to draw your attention to the opening and closing tag. And in between, you have the, the um, content that is hyperlinked. So download program schedule. This is what becomes hyperlinked. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. Headings are similar to subject headings and they range in size from H1 to an H6. Here's the syntax that you would use for creating a heading. It contains an opening tag as well as a closing tag. Paragraphs allow you to split up, structure, uh, split up and structure your text. This element also contains an opening tag as well as a closing tag. Lists allow you to group information together. The two list types used include unordered and ordered, and each list type contains a parent opening, which is your UL or your OL, as well as your child elements. So your specific list items, they too have their own opening and closing tags. So if you've noticed, this is a typo, this should be LI. So each list item actually should look like this, LI and then LI. Okay, so next we have our images. Images, um, the image element lets you embed images into your web page. You only need one tag and you need to include the source attribute, which points to where your image is located. So it's either on your machine or online. And you also need to include an alt attribute, which helps text readers describe your image. The last element we looked at was the anchor element. So this element lets you embed links into your web page. It too is, well, it's not quite self-contained. You do have a closing tag, but it has an important attribute that you need to include, which is the href attribute. So the hypertext reference, and this is where you would insert the link. When writing HTML, We've learned there's a basic structure that includes a series of elements and tags. Some elements have opening and closing tags and others do not. Let's take it a bit further by looking at the standard structure of an HTML document. When you create an HTML document using a text editor, there's a standard skeleton that you must adhere to. This is an example of what a basic HTML document looks like. It includes all of the main components needed for your browser to display the um, web page properly, your document properly. Let's go through each line defining the element and why they're important. So the first line contains a declaration element. Doc type tells the browser what kind of code it is receiving. In this case, it'd be HTML5, which it'll then display. So the second line contains the HTML element, and here's the closing tag for that. HTML is a root element, meaning all of your code needs to be written in between the opening and closing tags. You'll also notice that there's a language attribute. This specifies the type of language that's being used, in this case, English. The third line contains the head element. 
This element is not to be confused with the heading element that we looked at earlier. So within the opening and closing tags of the head element, you'll find all of the important information about your uh, web page. This information doesn't show up on your web page, so it doesn't show up in the browser. Rather, it's information about the page. So lines four and five contain the meta elements, which is pretty much metadata about the page itself, such as style descriptions and character set. Line six contains the title element, and this specifies the title for the document. It doesn't appear on your web page. Rather, it's seen in search engine results, and it appears um, as your browser tab. Line seven is the link element. So this is not to be confused with the anchor element. The link element points to a separate document, such as a CSS document or Google font document that is um, connected to your HTML document. It doesn't actually contain uh, any closing tags. It's similar to an image element in that it's, it, it's pretty much self-contained. All the information you need is in that one tag. It's empty in that sense. Its sole purpose, again, is to link to other documents. And then our the line nine, um, this contains the body element. So this is where you write your content in between the opening and closing tag. So this is where you'd include your headings, your paragraphs, your lists, your images, your anchors, and pretty much everything that is contained, everything that's written in between that opening and closing tag is what gets displayed by the browser on your web page. So it's what people see when they land on your web page or your website. So now that we've covered the basics of HTML, let's demo what we've covered using codepen.io. So I'm going to switch to codepen.io. CodePen is an online code editor that allows you to code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can sign up for a free account, or you can just jump in and start playing around with what you've learned. This is what the main site looks like. You can create an account, once again, by signing up. If you already have an account, you can log in, or you can go ahead and hit Start Coding which is what I'm going to do. So you'll notice there are three boxes at the top. These are called pens. It's where you would write your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript. The default viewer is um, where the pens are at the top, but you can change the editor layout by clicking this button up here and this changes the view. So you can have it on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. What I really like about CodePen is that it's very straightforward and it lets you test out what you've learned without feeling intimidated. It also gives you an immediate view of your work and it requires a lot less setup in comparison to other editors like VS Code. Mind you, a text editor like VS Code is considered industry standard. And when you start typing your code, the immediate view is contained within this box down here. This is your viewer. With that being said, let's go ahead and create a basic web page. While we would normally start out with our basic HTML skeleton, where you we would want to declare the document type, the head, the title, and the body. What's nice about CodePen is that you don't have to do that. It's already, they've already done that for you on the back end. So we can't see it, but it's there. In general, it's good practice too. But again, when you're using CodePen, you don't have to do that. 
Okay, let's practice what we learned today. So in this demo, we'll use different headings, we'll insert an image, we'll use several different paragraphs, practice creating unordered and ordered lists, and then lastly, we're going to use the anchor element to insert two different links in, within one of our paragraphs. So this web page that I'm going to create is going to be on HTML basics, what we've covered today. So I'm going to go ahead and start by creating an H1 heading. And to do that, I'll need to create that opening and closing tags for the H1. So I'll type a left angle bracket, H1, and then a right angle bracket to create the opening tag, and then a left angle bracket, forward slash, H1, right angle bracket. So that completes our opening and closing tag for the heading. And the title is going to be HTML basics. Okay. Next, I'm going to insert an image into our web page. So I'll need to use the image element, the image opening tag. Remember, image is an empty element in that you don't have to include a closing tag. All the information we need is within that opening tag. So I'll type that left angle bracket, IMG, for image space, I need to use the two important attributes. So I'll go ahead and type out SRC equals quotation marks, space ALT equals quotation marks, and then that right angle bracket to create our image tag. So I don't have an image saved on my device, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a website called placeimg.com. This is a great site for using placeholder images. So you, if you know you'd like to use an image on your site, but you don't have the image itself, you can always come to a website like placeimg and use um, a placeholder image while you, it, it essentially lets you look at how your page, it lets you see what the page will look like with an image if you don't have it. Um, I know that we are creating a web page on HTML, which I then would like to select tech. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this link and use it in my source attribute. And then for the description, I'm going to describe this picture. So I'll just type image of a technological device. Okay, so if I scroll down, there is our image. All right. Next, I'm going to use a paragraph. Um, I'd like to type out a sentence on what HTML is. So I'll need to use that paragraph element. So we have our left angle bracket, T, our right angle bracket. And for good practice, let's go ahead and create that closing tag. I like to open up, I like to use that opening tag and followed by the closing tag so I don't forget before I actually type any of the content out. So I'll need that forward slash, P, and then right angle bracket. And this is where in between we'll write our content. So I'm going to type out the following sentence. HTML is the primary language used to create websites. HTML stands for hypertext markup language, period. It controls the layout of the page by telling the browser what is on the page, period. And we can scroll down in the viewer to see if that 
sentence or if those sentences displayed properly, which they did. Here is a typo. Okay. So next, let's go ahead and add another heading. Let's use an H2 heading, and I'm going to title this Elements and Tags. So to create that H2, I'll need that left angle bracket, H2, right angle bracket, and let me go ahead and create that closing tag. And then sandwiched in between is going to be our actual heading, Elements and Tags. And I'll scroll down in the viewer, and there it is, perfect. So when speaking of elements of tags, I'm going to go ahead and create another paragraph. So I have my opening and my closing tag. And then the sentence is HTML syntax consists of elements and tags. Let's be a markup that you use to give meaning to to the HTML document. There are several different types of elements, such as paragraphs and headings, period. Let's take a look at lists, period. Okay. So I'm going to create another paragraph to um, introduce our list element. So it's that left angle bracket, P, right angle bracket to create our opening tag. And for that closing tag, once again, we'll need the left angle bracket, forward slash P, and then that right angle bracket to complete it. And sandwiched in between will be the following sentence. There are two types of lists, ordered and unordered. Here's an example of an ordered, ordered list. Okay. So let's see, let me go ahead. Next, I'm going to create that um, the ordered list. So I'll need the left angle bracket, OL for ordered list, right angle bracket to complete that opening tag. And I'll need to create the closing tag, which is the left angle bracket, OL. Oh, I, I messed up. Okay, so it's the left angle bracket, forward slash OL right angle bracket. So that's the correct uh, syntax for that closing tag. And then I'll need to create each individual list item. And remember, each list item has its own opening and closing tag. So we've got list item. And then I'll create three of these. So left angle bracket, LI right angle bracket to complete that opening tag, and then left angle bracket, forward slash, LI, right angle bracket to complete that closing tag. And let me do that one more time. Okay. And then each list item will be displayed sandwiched in between that opening and closing. So I'll include item one, item two, and item three. So if I scroll down in my viewer, it displays correctly. Um, so we're doing a good job. Okay. Okay, perfect. I'm going to create another sentence to introduce the example of using unordered lists. So I'm going to create uh, opening and closing tags for a paragraph. So that's left angle bracket, P, right angle bracket. And I'll create the closing tag so I don't forget. Left angle bracket, forward slash P, right angle bracket. And this is where I'm going to include that introductory sentence. So here's 
example of an unordered list. And then I'll follow that by the um, by using the opening and closing tags for unordered list. And that again is the left angle bracket, UL, right angle bracket, left angle bracket, forward slash, UL, right angle bracket. And that creates that opening and closing tag. And then I need to create each individual list item. So I'll create um, a three different list items. So left angle bracket, LI, right angle bracket for the opening tag, left angle bracket, forward slash, LI, right angle bracket. And I'll do that one more time. Okay. And then in between the opening and closing, I'll include the different items, item A, item B, and item C. If I scroll down in the viewer, it should display everything that we've written up here. And it does. Perfect. Okay. Next, let's practice using the anchor element. So this is where we're going to embed some links into our paragraph. So I am going to create a heading, an H3 heading. So it's that left angle bracket, H3 the right angle bracket to create the opening. And then you need the closing tag, which is that left angle bracket H, excuse me, right left angle bracket forward slash H3, and then your closing bracket to create the closing tag. And this I'll label resources. So I'll follow that with a paragraph on um, additional resources. So. The sentence is as follows. If you'd like to learn more about HTML, check out LinkedIn Learning and Mozilla Developer Network. So within this sentence, I would like to hyperlink LinkedIn Learning so that if you were to click on it, it would take you to our uh, Plano Public Library's LinkedIn Learning landing page. And if you were to click on Mozilla Developer Network, that would take you to that website. And the way I would create these two different hyperlinks is by wrapping LinkedIn Learning and Mozilla Developer Network with an anchor tag. So let's try the first, which is our LinkedIn Learning. So you, if you recall, an anchor tag lets you embed links and it contains a closing, uh, excuse me, it contains that opening and closing tag. So our opening tag is going to go right before the text that we would like to hyperlink. So right before learning, I'm going to create that opening tag. So it's left angle bracket, A for anchor, space, href equals, and then two sets of quotation marks, and then a right angle bracket. And then after the word learning, that's where I'm going to put my closing tag. So it's the left angle bracket, forward slash A, right angle bracket. What this is going to do is this is going to create uh, that hyperlink, which is what we want. So I need to find the link for our LinkedIn learning. I'm just going to copy that and place it in between the quotation marks. So if I were to scroll down and click this link, it would take me to the page. Hopefully it would do so. Instead of clicking the link right away, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to hover over it, right click and open link in a new tab, which it does. It opens the link in a new tab. So we know we've correctly used that anchor element. Now let's go ahead and do the same with Mozilla Developer Network. So remember, whatever you'd like to hyperlink, you have to insert the opening tag before the, uh, before the word and then the closing tag after the word itself. So to create that opening tag, it's a left angle bracket, 
A space href equals, and then two sets of quotation marks, and then your right angle bracket. That completes the opening tag. And then let's go ahead and include the closing tag. So after the word network, I'll type a left angle bracket, forward slash A, and then right angle bracket. And this should create um, a hyperlink of Mozilla Developer Network. Let me hop over to their site and I will copy that web address and then paste it in. If I didn't copy the address and I just typed in um, developer dot Mozilla, what is it, dot org, um, let's see if that works. You'd think that it would take you straight to the site since it looks correct. And it actually doesn't, it says not found. And the reason for that is because while we don't see it up here, you have to include the HTTPS, um, you have to include all of that information within the link. So that's the correct link. And then if I hover over it and do a right click and open link in a, in a new tab, it does take me to their um, landing page, which is what we want. All right, well, that pretty much covers everything we've learned today. We've used our H1 heading, we've used an H2 heading, an H3 heading, we've, we've um, embedded a, an image, we've used several different paragraphs as well as lists. We have our ordered lists and, un, and our unordered list as well as our anchor element. So we've embedded links into our paragraphs. I'm going to jump back into our presentation so we can go ahead and take a look at some other open source text editors. So there are many more text editors that you can use in addition to Visual Studio Code, as well as CodePen.io, which is your online code editor. You also have Brackets and Atom. These are all programs you'd need to download to your computer, and I believe they are free. I'd like to point you towards some resources. So some of the resources I'd like to highlight include Mozilla Developer Network and um, LinkedIn Learning and our Book a Librarian. Mozilla Developer Network contains a lot of useful information, such as resource guides, tutorials on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. LinkedIn Learning has several classes you can take on web development, one of which I recommend is the HTML Basics Essential Training by Jen Simmons. And our Book a Librarian is another great, is another great resource you can use which you can find on our website, planolibrary.org, under our About section, and it's titled Help from a Librarian, or you can use this link, this direct link. And with Book a Librarian, this gives you one-on-one, -on -one, 30 minute assistance um, with uh, whatever you need assistance with. Some upcoming programs I would like to highlight is our virtual programs. We have Google Suite, which will cover uh, documents on December 8th at 1 p.m. And then we have Photoshop on December 15th at 1 p.m. as well. In-person programs, we have a vision board party if you'd like to attend, that's going to be at Schimmelfinnig on December 14th at 7 p.m. So that concludes our presentation. Um, thank you for taking the time to attend our virtual program on HTML basics. You can find more resources on our website, planolibrary.org, as well as our blog, planolibrarylearns.org. So I'd like to open it up for a Q&A. Are there any questions? I know we covered a lot of information today, and if you don't have any immediate questions, that is okay. You can always use Book a Librarian um, if you need uh, if you need further help with HTML basics. So I don't see any questions. 
in the chat. I'll give it another minute if there's any, if there are any last minute questions. If not, thank you so much for attending. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And if you weren't able to take notes, that is okay. It was a lot of information. This presentation will be uploaded to our YouTube page. So um, you'll have access to that in a few business days. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.